that you have uh, quickened us and made us alive, Lord God, that we've been saved right now, Lord God, by what Jesus did upon that cross, Lord God, through the blood, uh, through his blood that was shared, Lord God, for the remission of sins. We thank you, O oh God, for the new life. Hallelujah. We bless you right now. But Father God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you will open up spiritual ears today that we may hear what the Spirit is saying to the church right now, O oh God. We ask right now, Lord God, that hearts be pricked today, Lord God, to come and be saved, Lord God, that you would uh, strengthen us through the body of Christ, that we be strengthened, Lord God, that Christ might dwell in our hearts by faith. So we thank you, O oh God. We ask right now that you move in a mighty way. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we pray and we say amen. 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 To God be the glory. We bless amen. God for each and every one of you again. That again, I'm going to say it again. If you're not in the stadium, you can't see all the other stuff that goes on. But we bless God for the opportunity. Again, I thank God for you guys tuning in on Facebook. I bless God for you guys. And I must tell you guys that if it had not been for God pricking your hearts to, to move, uh, that we would not be able to do anything. Uh, so we give him the praise on and glory for all things. I mean for all things, material, uh, 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 just spiritual. We just thank God for all things. And I bless God for each and every one of you guys. And it's, it's just a, a blessing to be able to stand and share the word, praying that we be strengthened, praying that somebody be saved today. Praying that somebody will accept Christ as their Savior today. Amen. Amen. We, we thank God for the opportunity to just share in the Word. And as we look at the Scripture today, allow this Scripture to strengthen you to see that, oh man, I've just been going so many different places. I ain't going to even worry about it because I know the brother going to put a good head into it because we, we're, we're pretty much whatever, they, whatever come up. Uh, but I, I I can't all the time give a title or give a, a heading or whatever. I just go to the scripture. Amen? Amen. I just go to the scripture and I know what the Holy Spirit has pricked my heart to teach the body of Christ today or to teach us here and those that are abroad uh, about the oneness in Christ. About that oneness in Christ. Not only that, about uh, being meek and being lowly. And and, and, and and one thing Holy Spirit has shown me that there's no such thing as an arrogant Christian. You can't be you can't say Christian and say you and be arrogant at the same time. There's you no way that you can say that you is not there's nothing that we can do as believers to poke our chest out and say, I'm I'm bad because I know Christ is touching me because I was so good. You tell them a lie. <laughs> Receiving the gospel. It has to be some humbleness somewhere. Why? Even Christ humbled himself unto death upon the cross. Christ, son of God, God, yeah, humbled himself. And, then, and guess what as he said? Not my will be done, but thy will be done. This is the attitude of the believer. The attitude of the believer is not about me, it's about God. Any time that I bring attention to myself, then it ain't about God no more. It's about who? Me. Me. And as we look at the book today, if we look at the different passages of scripture, we're going to look at Paul telling these different churches that, look, let's make sure you stay humble. Let's make sure that your spirit, you have a lowly spirit. Let's make sure you be meek. Well, What's the importance of that? Pastor, what's the importance of that? Well, how can I even approach a, a, a non-believer in arrogance and offer him Christ? Huh? You get it? See, it, it was for the work of the gospel. See, everything that we do is for the work of the gospel. Guess what? It's kingdom building, but how can I do it? I got, we, he, he more concerned with just us few here. Is a lot of loss still out there. Yeah. Guess what? There's a lot of loss still in here. Yeah, right. Amen? Amen. But 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 Paul is telling them, telling those believers that have came and accepted Christ as your Savior, be meek. And not only that, get what he told them. Lift the other folk up. <laughs> he said lift the other folk up. He said lift other people up. Yeah. He said lift the other people up. It's, 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 it's a, it's a uh, sad commentary when the believer can't lift somebody else up. 
Why? Because that believer there is pretty much leaning up on his own flesh. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen. So, so as we look at the scripture today, let us be taught today as what Paul is telling the believers, this is the attitude that you should have, one that is in Christ. One that has accepted Christ and, and, and is walking in Christ. This is the attitude you should have toward others, toward your brothers in Christ. This is the attitude you should have. Why? Because this is this is the teaching of Christ. This is the humbleness of Christ. This is what God, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth upon him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You, when you were dead in your sin and trespasses, God so loved you that he sent his only begotten son to die for a sinful, depraved, unworthy people. But he sent his only begotten son. How did he come? Humble. How do you come meet? Laid in a manger in a, in a, in a, a trough. That's right. In a trough. He wasn't even born in poverty as a moving infirm. In a trough. Laid there. Why? To see his humbleness. To see his meekness. But sometimes we can get saved and first thing we do, but we start walking around with our chest stuck out like we we're something so good that we did that, oh yeah, I know, I'm blessed and highly favored and I'm this and I'm that. And soon somebody said, let me get a dog, man, you better get away from me. And soon somebody said, man, I'm hungry, man, you better find something to eat. Huh? See, see that, that ain't the attitude of Christ. Everybody in Christ met, he met them with love. The prost the, not the prostitute, but well, I'm going to go down. But the woman that was caught in adultery, he stood on her side. <laughs> he stood on her side. See, we got this all twisted. <laughs> the woman at the well that had my four or five husbands, and Jesus said, well, ain't none of yours. <laughs> he stood with them. Come on. You get what I'm going with this? Yeah. We need to flip it back around as believers to recognize that by his grace are we saved. Amen. And by the grace of God, there go I. Yeah, that's right. But no, I, oh, I know you want to hear. Ah, you are the chosen. Huh? You are this and you are that. Let me lift you up. But we forget to lift God up. Amen. Oh, I know I'm going against preaching. <laughs> the popular preaching. But I want to preach what Paul preached. The one that I know God used to set churches up Amen. and people got saved. Amen. That's, that's who I want. I want to use this, what Jesus did <laughs> when he said foxes have holes and, and, and now uh, foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the son of man have nowhere to even. Jesus said, I ain't even got nowhere to lay my head. <laughs> so that's why I ain't preaching about houses. That's why I ain't preaching about money. I'm preaching the gospel that's, right. that's going to save a soul. And it's if one soul be saved, the angels in heaven rejoice. Amen. That's the strength of the gospel. For salvation for a lost person like all of us once was. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if we start off, we want to go to Philippians. Philippians, Paul talking to the, the, the church at Philippi. And we want to look at this scripture and analyze and see what is what are you talking about, Apostle Paul? What are you saying? What are you saying? You mean to tell me now that I'm saved, I'm supposed to do this? And you mean I ain't supposed to go around the parade and let everybody know I'm saved and put a big old tag on the front of my car and say, bless? You mean I ain't supposed to do all that? No. Be lowly. Be meek. And if you're blessed, God know you're blessed. Everybody else ain't got to know it. You're blessed because your sins was, have been forgiven. Got to advertise that on my truck. It's in my heart. Amen. Got to tell nobody. Your heart will show. One thing I hate to hear anybody say, God knows it's in my heart. He surely do. Be careful. Because <laughs> he surely does. Yeah. Know what's in our heart. You, you hear people say that. Well, he not, I ain't mean to say it like that, but he knows what's in He do know what's in our heart. Yeah. And I say, forgive me all the time. <laughs> it's to me in my heart. That's right. That's right. Huh? Oh, he know my heart. Yeah, he do. He definitely does. He know everything in Because why? He created you. Not only that, he created you before you was, he knew you before you was even in your mother's womb. He knew before you even knew. Amen? Amen. 
Come on. We got to think, man. We're dealing with a sovereign God. We're dealing with an underpressed. We're dealing with God that knows everything. He's everywhere at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Pat, he is. He, he knows everything. He can't hide nothing from him. Yeah, ain't nothing to catch God off God. Amen. And so we didn't really need to understand that as believers that he truly knows our heart. He knows our, our, what what is our, our, our reason for doing some of the stuff that we do. He already knows. He knows he know if it's from the heart or if it's from him. So we, we need to be careful with that. Did I say good morning? Good morning, everybody. Once again, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in this day. I ain't worrying about tomorrow. I'm going to glorify today and right now. I don't know what tomorrow may bring. Amen. I don't know. If, 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 if it be his will, I'll move on tomorrow. If it be his will. Yeah, we told him in James, said, if it be thy will, then we'll go on and we'll do this and we'll do that. Amen. If it be his will. Amen. So, uh, Philippians 2, Philippians chapter 2, Paul to Paul said it like this. He said, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, he said, if any comfort of love, he said, if any fellowship of the spirit, if any bowels of mercy, here it is, he told him that to do this, y'all, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded. That ye be like-minded. Having the same love. Guess what? Being on one accord of one mind. You see, you see, you see everything he said. He said, be like-minded. He said, be on one accord. And, 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 and when you look at this, he said that the confidence is in Christ. Okay, so everything is, is established that is in Christ, okay? How can I be in Christ? I got to be born again, do How can I be in Christ? I got to be an accepted the gospel, right? So I got to understand the gospel. I got to understand that it was because of God's grace that we were saved, not because of works. It was because of what God did, okay? Is that he gave his only begotten son. It wasn't that we deserved it. It wasn't because of no merit. So when Paul is saying this, you got to understand that he said, he said, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the spirit, if any of that is there in the believer, here it is, if any in the bowels of mercy fulfill ye joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Now I'm going to throw you for a loop now. I'm going to throw you for a loop. Okay, he already said be like-minded. He said be of one accord. He had Christ. Christ is the Christ is the pinnacle. Christ is the attitude. Christ is the love. Okay, this is all in Christ. And then, then now I'm gonna throw you something to tell you that the flesh can't be involved in. It. Okay, Christ was the pinnacle. Christ is what we're we're shooting for, right? The having the mind of Christ is what we're shooting for, right? So that means the flesh can't have nothing to do with it because Jesus said that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit. Examine yourself whether you be in the faith or not to know the Father oh, is a word and I'm looking for I can't, it ain't hit me, but it will in a minute. Pay attention. He said, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Strife, but keeping stuff up, being messy, Gossiping, all the foolishness that's in this flesh, okay? Of no vain glory, and vain glory we also know too that with what Solomon said that everything is vanity. He said everything is vanity, and this man who was the king was the richest king ever, but he said when he got when he really realized, it, he said all that stuff is vanity. So in everything, no vain glory. But Paul said, "Don't let this, nothing be done out of strife." That means just just causing chaos, and then, and then not only that, vain glory, your own personal reasons, selfish ambition, pride, pride. As a believer now, pride. Well, it's all about what I did. It's all about what we do. It's all no. Even I, even as a group, lifting up a certain denomination or lifting up a certain uh uh uh, just say. You got a club in the church. You got a club in the church. And what we did more than y'all did. 
We sold more plates than y'all did. Yeah. Competing in the church. Yeah. Well, we, we got more than we gave most ribbons than y'all gave. What they got to do with how many souls got saved while you were giving the ribbons? That's right. How many people accepted Christ? That's right. Huh? How many people accepted Christ doing that? So let's not get, let's not have no strife because all that can cause strife within the church. Paul had to get on the church of covering for the same stuff. Because some of them said we speak in tongue and the other one didn't speak in tongue. Some of them did this and some of them did that. You see, see how it can easily be strife in the church? Somebody can very well leave him because everybody here say they speak in tongue to one person. Well, I don't speak in tongue. They might not come back. That's right. See, this is what Paul's saying that you, you get what I'm getting at? Everybody in there might have seen, but one person or two probably can't hit a lick. I can't. Did everybody leave? That church can sing. I, can't. I just can't fit in now. Y'all see where I'm going? He said, let everything be done. This I need to be done. He said, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. And I know a lot of us got a problem with it, I don't. We got a problem with it. Putting somebody else above us. That is the walk. That is the walk that he's saying right now. Why? Because God put his son Jesus. One that was without sin. He gave him for the sins of the whole world. And he was without sin. But he gave his son. To, 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 to down the cross. For us. He's sitting in heaven. But he gave him. He cared that much to save for those that were saved. That he gave his son to take the wrath that he would lie upon the sinners that won't accept him. Right. Christ came all the way down to save sinners and ungodly people like me and you. And this is what he said. He said, but in the lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Amen. This is the walk of a believer. This is the true walk of a believer. I just can't, I just can't, uh, I just can't see to that. Well, Bob gave his son for us. He didn't, he didn't have no sin. He who knew no sin became sin that we may be what? The righteousness of God in him. See where I'm going with that? But I can't do this and I can't do that. Well, Christ gave his life for us. Everything has got to be looking right back at the cross. Everything got to point right back to God. Everything has got to go right back to God. Why? Because God gives us what? Life. Yeah. He gives everything. He's God. Come on. I, I got to go. Come on. Look not every man on his own thing, but every man also on the things of others. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? Now listen. Now, now look. Pay attention. Because I want y'all. I don't want nobody to get confused. Okay? When they say not look up on your own things, but on the things of others, look, it's got to be done in the heart of, of God. It can't be that I'm finna run out there now. I'm just gonna give everything, everything, because I know that no, that ain't what he, that ain't what that means. This has got to be done that again with the mind of Christ. Well, why am I saying that? Because we, I don't I don't want us to get to the point to where we feel like it's something that we have to do to be saved other than trust Christ. I don't, want to think, I don't want you to think that oh, I'm doing all this because this, this is why I'm saved. No, that ain't how you say it. Okay? Y'all got it? I need to explain this because I don't want you to just leave out here today and say I'm just going to sell all my stuff and give it to the poor and I'm just going to go live because I... No, you just did it for the wrong reason because your mind said, well, like, I'm going to do this because this is what the Bible said I'm going to do. Then you done it for the wrong reason. Okay? Paul is giving us an attitude of the believer. He's given a mindset of the believer. And I'm going to show you why in the next couple of scriptures. Y'all get it? Now he said lowliness. He said, lift other folks up sometime. Lift other folks up sometime. No, don't just, just don't just lift up the people, your children and people you know. Lift up a stranger sometime. Mm -hmm. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about how God loves them. Then not only did he love them, but he saved them too. If you would accept Christ as Savior, lift them up through the gospel. Get it? That's the only way you can truly lift somebody up is through the gospel. Amen? Amen. 
And it said, not only look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. As I explained to you guys earlier, that God has set us here for a reason. Okay? And it is to minister one to another too. Okay? Not just to say that I'm building all my wealth up and I'm building all my wealth. No, man, we got to, we got to be able to lift somebody else up. All right? We got to have other people in mind as well. If God, you say, well, God, I just thank you for enough that I can live and that I can have now. Lord, give me an abundance so I can help somebody else. Amen. Give me an abundance that I can reach out to feed somebody. Give me an abundance that I can get this gospel message so I can better get some more money to the church where you can take trips all over the community and, and give and give the gospel. That's right. You get it? So now it ain't just about me having it. It's about God bless me that we can help somebody else. And not only that, first of all, we can get the gospel out. That's right. Because God created us for him. Yeah. Everybody knew that? He created us for him. That we worship him. That we praise him. That his will be done in our lives. All right? This is what he said. Look not every man on his own. See, Paul is teaching them that they won't get so high minded. Okay, he saved y'all. Y'all were on your way to hell, but he saved you. He gave you the gospel. You accepted Christ. But now look, don't get too high minded now. Don't get so high minded that you saved and you recognize that you've been saved through the gospel. So don't get too high minded. Let's keep it where you're supposed to be. Let's stay lowly. So we won't be looking down on somebody else because they ain't saved or they haven't accepted Christ. Now you're looking down. Now you got to, you find yourself looking down on them. When you too was once dead in sin and trespasses. But now that you say it, now you want to look down at them. I just don't know why they act like, well, they still dead. But what you're supposed to be trying to do is give them the, get them the gospel. That's right. <laughs> so you're supposed to be looking down at them. You got to figure, man, what kind of way can I reach that brother there? That's right. How can I reach that sister down? Yeah, you so drunk. You, you get falling all over the hat. Now, if you're talking to a believer that said they, they say that he did, hey, man, you're, you're going to be a bad witness to somebody else now. You know, you're a believer now. I understand you had a little too much salt today, but it's going to be hard now. Somebody come in now, they won't need you to witness. They might not take you as a good witness right That's now. Right, right, right now. The more you might be sober, they might come to you and holler at you. You get it? Okay, look not every man upon his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Watch this. Let this mind, pay attention, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You are not, you, you, you can't be Christ because we, we sin. We sin, okay? Christ never sinned. But the mind of Christ can be in us. Why? Because now we're born again believers. Now we're children of God. That's the, what makes us children of God. That we're born again believers. Now we trust Christ for salvation. Now we can have the mind of Christ. Why? How? Through the Holy Spirit. Through what Christ did. Through what God did with him on the cross. Has given us that through the Holy Spirit. Okay? Amen. Through the Holy Spirit. Don't get it. Don't get it twisted. Just because you go out there and do a bunch of stuff and do this, that, the other, you can do. A uh, uh, unbeliever can do that. That's right. This is why he tells us, "But let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus." Like I told you earlier, Christ didn't meet no strangers. He treated everybody the same. I'm gonna tell you the ones he fussed at. He fussed at a lot of the ones that was in authority. He, he fussed at a lot of the ones that was over the church at the time, or over the that was supposed to be. Leave folks, the Pharisees and all. He told them, now y'all are y'all fathers of the devil. That's right. Because they were putting weights on the people that they couldn't even do, but they were putting it on the people. Telling them to do this and that, but they wouldn't, they said wouldn't even do it. You get it? And he was telling them, y'all wrong for that. He said, I am of my father, and I come to do the will of the father that sent me. That was really the one thing that led to the crucifixion, which was all part of the scripture, that he kept coming to him. And I, I do the will of the one that sent me. Who did man say? He blasphemed. He said he God. See what I'm saying? But it was all set up for that, for our redemption. Everything that happened upon the people, oh, they just did Christ. He, they did it. It was done for a reason, that we be saved. Okay? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hear that, and I'm going to show you the, 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 what he said. 
who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made of himself of no reputation. He didn't make a reputation of himself. He didn't want, he didn't run around telling everybody that that I'm Jesus and y'all get y'all better do what I say do, or my father gonna come down and scrap that. You get what I'm saying? You see, you oftentimes you'll see people that get saved or say they say, and the first day they want to beat you across the head. But I'm such and such, and I'm such and such, and I tell you that pride, that's arrogant. That ain't of Christ, that ain't loneliness. It's good to have all. Because he told us to do everything in decent and order, but it came one man, Lord over nobody in arrogance, and tell everybody this is what we got to do. This is how we're gonna do it. It's got to be right here in the word. That's right. Amen. Amen. Why do you say that? Because Jesus himself was God and that walked this earth. He didn't even do his own when he did the will of the Father. And he didn't ask for no reputation. He didn't want everybody bowing down to him. Even the apostles, when people came to try to kiss their head, they said, man, get up and don't kiss my hand. I'm a man just like you. The apostles did that. So this is what he's telling us. Don't do that. Why? Because had a mind of Christ, who had been in the form of God, thought not to make his own, not even make his own reputation. He didn't even want a reputation. He didn't even want a reputation. Why is this so important? Well, because we to reach other believers, to reach other lost souls. That what is the example that I can give? Christ. The only example that I can give to reach a lost soul is what Christ, who Christ is. I can't go upon what born again or who born again believers did. I can't go up on that. I can't meet nobody and say what born again believers doing this. No, I got to tell them what Christ did upon the cross. I gotta tell, I gotta, I gotta, everything has got to lead right to God, okay? Everything has got to be about the glory of God. Everything has got to be about what Christ did up on the cross, okay? Well, well why do you say that, Pastor? Well, if I keep it in that perspective, then guess what? Everything gonna work out. Why? Because that's his will. His will be done. He go, he said, go ye therefore unto all the nations. In other words, he sent us, or he sent those that, to preach the gospel, to teach the gospel. That's 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 our that's the main objective in the word is to make sure people know about Jesus Christ and know about what he did up on the cross. Okay? Everything should lead right back to Jesus. Okay? Why? Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself no reputation, and took upon himself the form of a what? Right. Servant. Mm -hmm. See that? He took the form of a servant. He took the form of a servant. Well, people say, well, that's the Lord. He a servant. He took the form of a servant. Jesus said, I came not to be served, but to what? Serve. Paul is telling the believers this so the arrogance won't come out. Paul is telling them this so the meekness will stay in place. Paul is telling them this that they will know how to walk in Christ, that they won't be all puffed up. That won't be all high-minded. Oh, this is very important in the body of believers. Why? Because it can cause strife. Yeah. If somebody gets too puffed up within the body, then it can cause strife. It can cause division. If too much arrogant come in here, it can cause division. And guess what it's meant to do? Stop the will of God going forth. I can keep I can keep so much going on right here in this assembly that they ain't gonna be able to do the will of God and, and get the gospel out. Mm -hmm. Because it's gonna be about my agenda. Right. What I wanna do. Well, I just wanna do it like this. Well, is it lining up with the word? <laughs> get it? It's about the gospel, guys, okay? Everything that you hear Paul teaching is about the gospel. What well, okay, well, I'm gonna show you anyway. <coughs> Come on. Here it is. And it said. That uh, upon the servant and was made in the likeness of man and being found found in the fashion as a man. I mean, he walked. He had blood in his body and he he walked just like me and you did. Guess what the Bible says? He walked this earth and he did not sin. But he was tempted with everything that could that a man could be tempted with. He was tempted, but he did not sin. Yeah, he was tempted just like we are every day, but he did not sin. Yeah, and when he took on that that blood. 
that, that, that blood in that body and all that, he came prone to whatever the flesh can do. But guess what? Uh, he's holy. Yeah, he was God. All right? He, could, he, he couldn't sin, but he was tempted with every sin. Come on, come on, hit it. And there's what it said. He what? Did he exalt himself? Did what he did? He humbled himself. You mean Jesus had to humble himself? You mean to tell me the Son of God, the Son of Man, had to humble himself? Come on now, Jesus. He had to humble himself? Man, y'all talking about Jesus, the one we up there praising and lifting our hand up to, he had to humble himself? Well, why is it so hard for some of us that say we're believers to humble ourselves? Because of the flesh. And you know it's true. And not only that, you've been taught to do that. That's right. You've been taught to lift up this and lift up that and do this and do that. But Jesus had to humble himself. This is our example to follow. He said, let this man be you that was also in Christ Jesus. <coughs> Ooh, pastor, you're going against some pastors now that teach it. Lift up this and do this and do that. Have the mind of Christ. <laughs> humble yourself. Because Christ had to humble himself. And if I'm going to follow any example, it's going to be Jesus Christ. Amen. This is my only example as a believer is Jesus Christ. Amen. There's nobody can stand over me and lord over me and try to get me to follow anybody else's traits other than Jesus Christ. Amen. And as a believer, should nobody be able to change your traits that you ought to follow Jesus Christ. He said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ. And if I get up here and tell you, let this mind be you that's in the presence of then you need to run me up out of here. Yeah. We put too many emphasis on the flesh and we follow man when you ought to be following Jesus. Yeah. We put too much emphasis on our own flesh when you ought to be following Jesus. Yeah. The Bible says, humble yourself before the Lord thy God and I will exalt you in due time. Yeah. We got to learn to humble ourselves and be meek and be lowly that God may up in his true time. Why? To do his will. Jesus Christ said, not my will be done, but your will be done. You've been praying and saying you're the little bitty one, but do we truly understand that it's God's will be done? Christ even humbled himself. Not only that, pay attention what he did. Pay attention. Because it was for the glorification of God's will be done, but when he humbled himself, you and I became Oh man, a chance that we could be saved. That's right. Because when he humbled himself, not only did he humble himself, he go to the scripture. And then found in the fact of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient. <laughs> he became obedient. Who did he come obedient to his father? I'm going to send you to die for this world. I'm going to send you as a perfect sacrifice to die for this world. That I can bring them back unto me. That you can redeem them back to me. That we can be reconciled. You gonna pour, I'm going to allow your blood to be poured upon the cross. That you can save the ungodly and the sinners. Without the blood, there's no remission of sin. That's right. This is the believer, guys. This is the believer. If anybody told you any other way to do it, then they lied. This is what we believe as believers that's in the book. Amen? Come on, come on. He said it like this. He said, uh, and being the form of a man, as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto the death. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Even to the death on the cross. The crucifixion was the worst death that you can that can be done. I can't, I don't want to say it without remembering, but I want to say it was Peter or either Paul. They said they didn't even want to be crucified upright like Jesus was. They wanted to be crucified upside down. Oh, y'all didn't know uh, all, I think, except John, but you know just about everybody that was preaching the gospel, got killed for preaching the gospel? <laughs> y'all recognize that? That Jesus got killed, and then a lot of his apostles, they got killed too. Why? For preaching the gospel. And man, we can make uh, preaching so glorious. We can make preaching so glorious. We can get all these big calls and big houses and stuff. And we pray. These guys died for the gospel. These guys died for preaching Jesus. Yes. 
And if you do preach Jesus, you're going to be persecuted for it. That's right. That's right. You know, you got to hear the truth. Some, sooner or later, you got to hear the truth. <laughs> You've been believing a lie for a long time, but sooner or later, you got to hear the truth. <laughs> because if you preach the gospel, it's the truth. Why? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. This guy was stoned to death for preaching the gospel. But they weren't crucified like our Savior. The one that said he wanted to be crucified upside down, he thought he wasn't even worthy enough to be crucified the same way the Savior was. That's right. That's why he said, I can't do that because Jesus was done upright. I need to be upside down because I'm not worthy myself to be crucified like Jesus. Y'all see that? You see, you see the, the, the importance of knowing what it means to be humble? You see the importance of it? As a body of believers, this is very important as a believer. Why? That the will of God be done. Why? I can't reach nobody with arrogance. I can't reach with nobody saying I'm better than you. I can't reach nobody not saying where I've been and what, what's yet going on in your life. And it ain't about me. It's about what Jesus Christ did up on Calvary. That's what it's about. Okay? He, come on, come on, come on, come on. He said this, this what he did. He said that he, even the death upon the cross. Yeah, well, Wherefore God also have highly exalted him. The Bible says humble yourself and God will exalt you in due time. So if you lift yourself up, then guess what? That wasn't God. <laughs> you get it? When you humble yourself, then God will lift you up in due time. That's right. But he said it in Jesus Christ, guess what? He was highly exalted. Okay? Here it is. He, he was highly exalted above what? Well, we are here. He was highly uh, uh, exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Okay? There's no name above Jesus. Okay? He has given him a name that's above every name. So if you bind down, if you wish to be any other name than Jesus Christ, then you need to repent and turn from that. Have a change of mind and come right back to Jesus. Okay? And you can, I mean, as a believer now, now non-believer, they're going to do what they want to do. But if you say you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, then you got to, you got to lift up Jesus. Amen? Amen. And I, if somebody else doing what they do, that's, that's what they do. But as the body of believers, Paul is talking to the believers. I'm talking to these believers that's here. And if it be one that's, that haven't accepted Christ, then I'm asking them that they would accept Christ. Because he got a name that's been highly exalted above all names. Well, what you mean by that? Well, you're going to see. Here it is. Come on. That at the name of Jesus, some knees going to bow. Everybody. Huh? Everybody. Do you mean, so everybody that worshiping all these other names? He said every what? Every knee. He didn't say some. He didn't say a few. He didn't just say those are the right. He said every knee. Every, come on, now I got to go on through it. Every knee shall bow of things what? And things in what? And things under what? And that every time what? That Jesus Christ is what? To the glory of what? God the Father. This is what Paul is giving an example to be enlightened minded and not only that, to humble yourself before the Lord thy God. And in due time, he will, he will exalt you. Not only that, he's saying that every knee and every tongue shall confess that, come on, that Jesus is Lord to the glory of what? God. Come on, I, come on, I, I got to go. I stayed that way long than I wanted to. Go to so, so now we see, now we see it, the mind of Christ. I had to start there to get to where I'm going now because without the foundation of having the mind of Christ, you can't go nowhere else. Because Paul, uh, Paul said that if you build on any other foundation other than that on Christ, it's going to be burned anyway. Because you can't build upon anything other than Christ. Everything has got to be built up on Christ. Okay? Everything. 
If, if anything built on anything else, it, I'm like this, it's sinking sand. All right? Come on, let's go to Romans 12. Because I, 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 I can see that it was very important as Apostle Paul was teaching these different churches that he, he just about every one he would continuously tell them to have this mind that don't lift yourself up higher than anybody else. Why? Because it's the pride of life. Right. John, the Apostle John said, love not the world, nor the things in it. And one of them was the pride of life. And another one was the lust of the eye. And another one was the lust of the flesh. And all that can lead right to the pride of life. And this is important in the body of believers. Here it is again. How can I reach others? How can I reach others? I can't reach nobody in arrogance. I can't, I can't, I can't even preach the gospel in arrogance. I got to be humble even standing here preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I got to be humble. Because why? It ain't about me. It's about his glory. It's about him being lifted up. I got to even make sure that I'm preaching humbly. Amen? Amen. Because Amen. Amen. If, if, if any kind of way that I try to make it about me, then guess what? That's, it, that is no good. No good at all. Y'all understand where we're going? Y'all there? Romans 12. Pay attention to Pastor Paul again. And and, and, and everybody, well, you always are uh, quoting Paul. Well, if you look through the New Testament, you're going to see just about all the writings of Paul. Yeah. Just about, you go back, you're going to Romans, Ephesians, Philippians, Timothy, uh, Colossians. All of you just about Pastor Paul. Yeah. Come with me about around about the 16th verse and 12th chapter. We need the teaching, okay? We need the teaching because this is the way that we learn what the believer should be walking in, amen? And we need the teaching to understand that it's about Christ, okay? It's about the will of God. It is not about us. It's about him, okay? We're in Christ. Pay attention to pay attention to the word, the words that he tell us here, and I'm gonna go to another script, scripture right quick. Here we are, right here. Y'all there? You gonna see something? That, Romans 12, chapter uh, verse 16. You're gonna just about see some of the same thing. He taught the same thing to every church. That's why he keeps saying be like-minded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why he keeps saying be of the same mind. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if any other church right now, we ought to be able to sit down with any other assembly and we ought to be lining up on the same gospel. Mm -hmm. We ought to be lining up on the same gospel. I believe I'm saved by grace through faith and not of myself. I believe I can't be saved by works. If we sit with another, we grab every church up in here, then we're supposed to be speaking the same thing. We're supposed to be speaking the same thing. And it all ultimately be should lead him to Christ right. as being a savior and nothing else. By grace. And grace means that what it is. Unmerited favor. Meaning you didn't, didn't deserve nothing to be saved. You accepted Christ as your savior. You came before as a sinner and you trust him for salvation through what he did upon the cross. Not by works that any man should boast. Can no man boast about being saved that is something they did because you can't save yourself. Nobody can save themselves. Amen? Amen? So this is what Paul is telling. He told him in the last, last script, he told him to be like-minded, didn't he? He told him to be on one accord, didn't he? Y'all seen that? I'm going to the Romans right now. He never made it to Rome. He never made it to these particular, but he sent these epistles, okay? He never got a chance to be with them face-to-face, -face, okay? He wanted to. He said, I want to preach that gospel so bad. Right there with Charlie, I want to so bad. He said, because I'm not ashamed of the gospel. He wanted to. But he had his teaching go forth. Get what he said around. And boy, the teaching that come, we got into some of that last week. But he said like this. He said, be of the what? Be of different minds. Be of, be of my own mind. 
Be of the same mind. In the other scripture said, let this mind be in you that was also in what? Come on, I want y'all to learn and do it in school. Yeah, he did that church. Somebody else went to church today. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Having the mind of Christ is very important. Amen? Here it is. He said, be of the same mind toward another. Guess what he did? He said, mind not high things, but condescend to men of low esteem. He said, be not wise in your own conceit. I'm going to stop right there. Be not wise in your own conceit. What I just say, arrogance don't profit the gospel at all. Arrogance don't prosper the gospel at all. And if you catch me getting arrogant up here, you need to deep, you need to pull me to the side and say, Pastor, you're getting too arrogant up there. You ain't preaching the gospel. And you got the authority to do that. And if I'm not preaching the gospel, and if it come arrogant, if it come about me, then you need to pull me to the side. Y'all need to find another pastor. Yeah. And I'm saying that literally. You need to find another pastor. Because I'm supposed to be leading the sheep. I'm supposed to be preaching the gospel. And if I go preaching anything other than the gospel, woe unto me. That's right. You need to find another pastor. And I need to hit that door. Why? Because it tells me, be not wise in your own conceit. That I can come up with something else that I want to preach other than Jesus Christ, and y'all got to go along with it. No. It don't happen like that. And, and, and even if I came in if Sunday after Sunday and tried to lift you up to make you feel good about yourself, it would be the same thing as being wise in my own deceit and conceit. Y'all get it? Come on, let's go. I, ain't, I told you I wasn't going to stay in that long. Go to Ephesians. Go, on, go, go to Ephesians. Go to Ephesians uh, 4 and 1. And then, man, you show sure be going through that Bible. Well, that's where the word is. <laughs> the word, the word in the Bible. Huh? It ain't. I mean, I, I, I can't, I can't preach nothing else. That's all. It, I got the Bible. I got the word. The unfallible word is it, the word. Pay attention. You're gonna see the same thing. You're gonna see the same. You're gonna see the same. Thing. Ephesians 4. Apostle Paul, you get that, just say amen. amen. Apostle Paul said it like this. He said, I therefore talk about himself, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Pay attention. With all what? Lowliness. You see that word again, though? No. So this, so this, so that's three different books that we we have been taught out of this morning, and all three of them saying the same thing. All three of them telling us that as, as believers that we need to be have that mind that we don't lift ourselves up over nobody else to where to the point that we make them feel like they down here and we up here. Right. Got to be careful with that. I see it done all the time. I see it preached all the time. I see it taught all the time. That when you can go in a certain place, when you walk in there and you feel like you so low to the ground and they so high up in the air, then you're in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. You ought to be lifted up when you come in. Mm -hmm. Should nobody look down at you like that. Yeah. And I'm going to say this with authority. We're not going to do that around here. Amen. We're going to embrace everybody that comes in. Because why? Because he told me and, and when we walk in this vocation that we need to do it with lowliness and meekness. This is why Jesus met the woman at the well that he knew that, was, that she had all these men. This is why Jesus was able to tell her to give me a drink of water. Why? Because he was lowliness and he was me. And guess what? She was a Samaritan. And the Jews didn't have nothing to do with the Samaritans. 
Cause they were more like a mixed breed. So she knew right then when he asked them to give me a drip of water, they're like, y'all don't have nothing to do with me. See the meekness that Jesus had and the lowliness that Jesus had? Like this is a Samaritan woman and uh, he sent them all to get some need cause a lot of them wouldn't understand what he was doing. But he said, give me a drink of that water. Y'all y'all don't have nothing to do with it. See, the, see what I'm saying? See, she already knew that the Jews didn't have nothing to do with it. So I'm trying to show the same example that goes on a lot of times in churches. That what they doing up in here? You get what I'm going at? This is why he's telling you now that you have to be lowly. And this is why you have to be meek. I gave you an example of Jesus. I didn't give you no example of nobody. I, I told you what Jesus did. When he when the woman that was caught in the dungeon said, come and stand right here with me. He didn't tell her, you stay over there and I'm going to stand right here. He said, come right here. Get it? Come right here. The man with the leopard. Everybody else walked all the way around town so they wouldn't get close to him. Jesus walked right up there too. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> this is the loneliness. This is the meekness. Why do the believers need to know this so you won't get arrogant? So you'll stay humble. Why? So we can meet other uh, lost people that they can be saved. Amen. Is it, is it, this is very important. God didn't just save you to be saved. He saved you and gave you the word that you're going to meet somebody else and bring them to Christ as well. And you can't meet them with arrogance to bring nobody else to Jesus. Amen. you got to be humble. you got to be low. you got to be meek. Oh, I'm saved now. I'm not, no, it don't work like that. And it, and it don't bother me that if I meet somebody at Walmart and they don't ever set a foot in this, this church that I offer them the gospel. And wherever they germinate at, they germinate, they might go to Germany and, and God might get them to start a church. I don't know. That's right. But I did my job by presenting the gospel. That's right. It ain't about no numbers. Because it's more with us than it is with them. But the importance is the, the meekness, the lowliness, the example of Christ. That's the importance. This is what Paul said, and you walk in your vocation, this is what you need to be. You need to be like-minded, and what you need to make sure you do, you need to be lowly, and you need to be meek. Can't get nobody to say first thing, you need to stop this, you need to do that, you need to do that, and you need to do that. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed of him should not perish but have everlasting life. He didn't even, he didn't even uh, what they call that word, he didn't even critique you before he saved you. Because when you were dead and lost in your trespasses, he gave his son Jesus. When we were dead and lost in our trespasses, he gave his son Jesus. While we were yet lost in sin, he gave his son Jesus. He didn't critique you. He knew you was, wasn't no good. He knew it. He knew it was full of sin. That's why he gave his son. That's why he gave his son to die for us. But we got to, we got to take these same examples that the Bible has given us as believers. If we're going to meet others to be saved and we're going to meet lost souls, we got to have the same attitude toward others. Lowly. Meekness. Come on, I ain't through yet. Come on, I got, I got, I'm almost through, but I ain't there yet. Here it is. He said, with all lowliness and meekness and with long suffering, he did for bearing one another in love. He told us to have long suffering and for bearing one another in love. Meekness and long suffering just so happen to be a fruit of the spirit. Good evidence that you got that Holy Spirit to work in them when you got long suffering. When you got meekness. Good, good, good joy, love. See what I'm saying? This is this is this is fruit of the spirit. And what is the operation for this? Here I go again. To meet others that they may be saved. Or to get the gospel out. In, in any way to get the gospel out. Yeah, the gospel message out. Well, why? Because without the gospel message being spread, then nobody else can receive the Holy Spirit. And without the Holy Spirit, you can't have meekness. Without the Holy Spirit, you can't 
have what? Long suffering. Because we're quick to say, I ain't gonna have nothing else to do with it. I'm gone. I'm through with you. I ain't, I'm, I'm not gonna deal with you no more. I'm just, that's it. That's the last time. Ain't no long suffering in that. <laughs> well, you just ain't gonna never change. You just ain't, ain't no patience in that. Well, you ought to be there. Ain't no meekness in that. This is what Paul is telling them. Why? Because as Paul was sent to set the churches up, guess what they had to do? They too had to evangelize. They too had to be missionaries. They too had to reach others because there was the Gentiles and there were other Gentiles that weren't saved yet. There were other people that, that needed to be saved. But, like, but I got to tell you that you can't be arrogant as a believer. We got to be humble. We got to be meek. We got to be long suffering. Same purpose. The Father is the gospel. You're going to say, Pastor, oh, you talking about the Father is the gospel. Because that's the power of God. That's the salvation of everybody that believes. That's why. That's the agenda. That's why that's the agenda. But why? Because we've been called to preach the gospel. We've been called to be servants of the gospel. And anything that God is using you in this ministry, that's your call in the gospel. He said, if you give just a cold glass of water to somebody. Huh? So we make it more complicated than it really is. Meekness, long suffering, loneliness. If we start right there. If we can just start right there. Just start right there. This is why Paul told him that in your vocation, and yes, you do have a vocation. Every one of you got a vocation. Why? Because y'all didn't accept the Christ as y'all say. And y'all say y'all born again. And y'all say y'all got the Holy Spirit. Then guess what? Y'all got to open y'all mouth and tell somebody about Jesus Christ in some kind of way. If it's a text or Facebook or however, tell somebody about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the gospel. Believe in it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got that. Come on, come on, come on. That's a mandate, guys. Here it is. He said... Forbearing one another in love. We got to for, forbear one another in love. In other words, I got to deal with you. I got to deal with if the body of belief. We got to deal with one another in love. We got to we got to just work through. We got to work through for the same for the same purpose for the followers of the gospel. Yeah. Because what good is it? How how do it look for the body of Christ to be tore up? And we can't get along with each other for the outside of looking in, the one that ain't saved, but we tore up and we ain't loving each other. How that how that look to them? You mean it, being saved and we're gonna, they, we're gonna be fighting and fussing like they be doing? Why don't get mad because they uh, didn't get the same today and they got mad and left out the church early? <laughs> They let me say my soul, I'm gone. <laughs> and that person in that for the bed for time, what she got on makeup? They won't let us say, I ain't coming back here no more. Well, ain't no unity, ain't no love. See, that's arrogance. It's about them. It ain't about the gospel. We come here to learn. We come here to, to be in, equipped with the word of the gospel. I just got to show you examples because I've seen a lot of this. I'm over the I'm over the kitchen. Bet nobody else go back in there. <laughs> That ain't loneliness. That ain't meekness. That ain't love. Since you want to go in there and cook today, fine, I'll help whatever you need. Let's do it. Because whatever we do, we want to do it for the fathers of the gospel. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Sister, let's do it together. Well, I don't really need you. But well, I'm going to stand here and look, girl, to the glory be to God. And I'm just going to say, you hear where I'm going now? Because I love that whatever you're doing, we're going to get the gospel out through this. Because the glory be to God. You see? It's all about the glory be to God. And it's all about getting the word out. And it's all about the peace. And come on, it's all about Jesus. Amen. And about us. And when you turn around and make it about you, then you done took it off Christ. You know, that, 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 oh, Lord, have mercy. I better not ever do that. It's about Jesus. It's about the glory of God, okay? It's all about the glory of God. It's all, come on, this is why Paul is telling them that in your vocation, do with all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity. Wow. To keep the what? Unity. Unity. Mm. 
of the spirit and the bond of peace. That's amazing, ain't it? You see that? Keep the unity in the spirit and the bond of peace. And that bond means it's together, ain't it? That bond meaning is 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 bond. You know that that bond is together. That bond of peace. That mean that peace it comes from above. Amen. Because he said it like this: There's one body, one spirit. Even as you you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Holy Spirit. If we all recognize one God, one faith, one baptism, we recognize that we're saved by grace through faith, not in words that any man should boast, that we will sin with the Holy Ghost when we were born again, that the Holy Ghost seal us, then we all in all where we in, in Christ. See the power in that? You see the power in that? So right now, it's not it's not about me, and it's not about me. I didn't, I didn't X me out of the equation. It's in Christ. You get it? I didn't X me out. Any of my expectations, anything that I was thinking about, then no, it's in Christ. Now, Father, now I'm fully surrendered. Now it be God's will. Perfect example, Jesus Christ. He said, not my will, but thy will. That's my hero. That's my, that's my, what they say, that's my mentor. That's my, what they say, that, that, that you give you somebody. If, if Jesus said, not my will, but thy will, get what Pastor Christ will say. Not my will, but thy will be done. And I want to say it without arrogance. Whatever you use, is use. Because I know I ain't worthy to be used, just use. See, that when you took it off you and put it on Jesus. Yeah. Now, I can't go wrong because why? I'm in Jesus. That's right. Now, if it don't look right to everybody else, I don't care because it's in Jesus. <laughs> See? See what? Now, if I get in the way, then I can know it's going to be embarrassing because I got in the way. <laughs> this is why Paul saying that you had a mind of Christ. That not my will, but thy will be done. When we make our own personal agendas, it's about the flesh. That's right. And Paul said, we got to glorify God. Not my will be done, but thy will be done. I got one more. Go to Colossians. I tell you what, go back to Philippians first, and I want to show you an example that that brother Paul, when he sent T Timothy back to the to the church to Philippi, this is the type of of, uh, of of attitude even him as a apostle as a leader, even before he sent anybody else upon the group of people that was there uh, uh, doing the will of God. This is what. When he sent this letter, he told him this. I'm gonna send Timothy to you, or Tilopolis. I already said it wrong. But this is what the requirements that he that he sent. Even when he sent somebody else to be over them to set over them, this is what he this is what he did. And buddy, when I was reading and studying this, going over this, and I said, Wow, wow. He, 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 he was a leader, he was an apostle, but he made sure that he had a like-minded teacher or preacher that he was sent to do that, which is the will of God. It'd be just like me leaving here and planting another church by the will of God somewhere else and then sending somebody else here to preach and teach and to whatever. And then it, they, their agenda was different than ours. They've loved for the for the believers were different than mine. Paul wasn't like that. Pay attention to how he did it. I was looking at it and I said, wow. Look at, look at, 
Mm -hmm. Am I, did I say Philippians? Mm -hmm. I might have told you wrong. Yeah, Philippians. Philippians around about the 20th verse in that same chapter that we was in, uh, chapter 2. Pay attention to this, man. This blew my mind, which I've seen it before, but it, it wasn't it was it wasn't needed at the time for me to bring it to you guys so you can see. And so, so you can really look at this. And, and just pay attention to even when Apostle Paul he said it like this. And verse 19, y'all have two and nineteen. This was even after he was told us that every knee should bow and every tongue should confess. And then he went on and he told him to do all things without murmuring and disputing. He said that ye may be blameless and harmless to the, in the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Then he went on down and he said, holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labor in vain. He was talking about the labor and all that he was talking about them rejoicing in Christ. Then he went on down to verse 19. He said, but I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Theometrius shortly unto you. Pay attention, guys. Same, same mindset to you that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. He wanted to know the state of the church. He wanted to know the state of the church. He wanted to know how the church was doing. He wanted to make sure everybody in the church was trusting God. He wanted to make sure that they weren't being high-minded. He wanted to know the state of the church. And when he sent him, but guess what he said about Timothy? He said it like this. For I have no man, pay attention, he had no man what? Like-minded. Like -minded. There that word is again. And guess what? Who would naturally care for your... He cared about the people. He sent somebody that cared about the people to them because he was like-minded. All these things when you telling them to be meek and lowly and long-serving, he knew Timothy was the same way. And he said it before the, 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 the body to, 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 come on, I got to go. For all seek their what? Own, not the things which are what? Are Christ. Are Christ. See that? Everything that was of Christ, he said, not all. He said, for all seek their own. And I thought earlier he told us that. Yeah. He told us, don't go seeking your own stuff. He said, seek the things that are God. You seen that? So he said that the, even Timothy, he, he, he want to seek the things that are Christ. He want to make sure that you're being taught. He want to make sure that you're knowing what the will of God is. He want to make sure that you're being uh, have that lowliness state where you can reach others. In other words, for the continuance of the gospel. Okay? For the faith of the gospel. Everything was for the faith of the gospel. Everything was for the fatherance of the gospel. Okay? Come on, I know you ain't been taught that, but that's okay. You're going to be, you taught it now. Here it is. He said, but ye know the proof of him. This is how you're going to know the proof of him. But ye know, come on, I want y'all to see it. But ye know the proof of him, talking about Timothy, that as a son with the father, he has served with me in the what? <laughs> See, he led right back to the gospel, didn't he? This is why the gospel message is so important. This is why what we do is for the gospel. And that's something. Everything leads back to the gospel. Go to Colossians. I, I just want to show y'all that. Before he sent in about that, he wanted to make sure that they was where they need to be. Colossians 3. And we're going to do this. After I do this, and I got one, one more, I'm just going to show you this. In Colossians 3, Paul talking to the church at Colossus. Same thing. Same message. Same teaching. Okay? Same teaching. He didn't change. Okay, he didn't tell one church to be this way and another church to be that way. He told them all to be the same way. He told them to be like-minded on one accord for the fathers of the gospel, for the teaching of Christ. Get it? Wasn't no other agenda. It was for the gospel. It was for the teaching of Christ. It was for the glorifying of God. Wasn't no other agenda. It's only one agenda in the gospel. 
And that's just Christ said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. It is to get the gospel message about Jesus Christ out. That's the only agenda. Let me see what this thing right here say, amen. 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 <laughs> it's all going to agenda. Because if you got any other agenda, then you need to get you need to repent from that and get that agenda that's about the gospel. Amen. If you're going to talk anything else in the world, you need to come back to the gospel. Amen? It's about what? The gospel. Here it is. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Here it is in, in, in chapter 3. Chapter 3 of Colossians said, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved balls of mercy, kindness. Y'all see that? I said that word kindness and came back again. Humbleness. Man, they keep using that word humbleness. But I, I thought, I thought once I got saved and got uh, uh, this, I'm supposed to get arrogant. I'm supposed to walk around with my head up like this and say, yeah, I'm saved, sanctified, and sealed with the Holy Ghost. Guess what? Humbleness of mind. Meekness. Here it is again, guys. Long suffering. Forbearing one another. And that is again. And forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Man. So you mean Tim ain't supposed to be out there tearing down stuff and all that as a believer? No. Come on, here we go. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. And if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all things, put on charity. That's love again, y'all. Which is the bond of what? Perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body, and be what? Thankful. Thank. Be ye thankful. All, uh, everything that we've talked about today is about the having the mind of Christ. As the body of believers, to have the mind of Christ, and not only that, to walk in loneliness, meekness, have long suffering, patience. Everything that we've been taught, forgive. Uh, all this is, is for the for. For the perfected of the saints, but that we may reach others. We got we, we must reach others. <clears throat> Why? For the sake of the gospel. You save now. Okay? You save, but not because of your works. You save by grace through faith in what Christ did. Now, guess what? We are able to be used of God to reach others for Christ. Okay? Here it is, the, the, the last one, and I'm going to get out of here with this one. And this was one that I started because as I'm led, I just want to be led and I want to go to 2 Corinthians. And when Paul talking to the, Corinth, the church at Corinth in the last part of this chapter, when he said farewell, this is what he told them. This is what he told them. This is what he told them. 2 Corinthians 13 and 11. 2 Corinthians 13 and 11. Write the scriptures down. Go back to them. Allow the Holy Spirit to show you what he want to show you for whatever it is that he's doing through you to reach somebody else. And I always, I always say that. I always say that to that whatever he's giving me is for somebody else and then what he's giving me for me and it is, it's a difference. But when we surrender to him, then we, gonna, we we hear it ain't about us. It's about his will being done. Amen? His will being done. And Paul said in the 13, 2 Corinthians in 13, and, when, and this is what started it all. This is what started it all with me with this, with this, with this particular <laughs> learning or teaching at 13 
the 11th verse. Y'all got it? 2 Corinthians 13, around about the 11th verse. And this is, this is amazing because when I read this and I'm like, wow. Well, a lot of times people say, I don't have peace. I don't have peace. I don't have this and I don't have that. Well, peace comes from God. It comes from God. So if you got peace and you're trying to get it within yourself, then you don't, you're going to the wrong place. Peace comes from God. Amen? Amen. Say peace comes from God. Peace comes from God. He said, finally, brother, y'all there? He said, finally, brother. He said, farewell. He said, be perfect. Be of good comfort. We seen that earlier. Be of what? Amen. One mind. Amen. We keep seeing that. Like minded. One mind. All within the body. Okay? Get what? Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. Amen. Amen. So the oneness, the lowliness, the meekness, the humbleness, all this is the mind of Christ. All this is the believer that have accepted Christ as Savior, sealed with the Holy Ghost. This is what Paul, would, he was preaching to believers now. This one, he went on the street corner, uh, like you see a lot of people hollering out, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this, you need to do that. Well, they can't do nothing if they still dead. He was talking to the believers and telling them that this is the mindset that we need to have as believers. I can talk to you in that in that fashion because everybody here has accepted Christ as Savior. Have been accepted Christ by faith. Okay? Not by works. But a, a, a non-believer, a person that have not accepted Christ, he can't receive this. Can't understand it. I'm going to step on some toes. There's a lot of people that have been in church all their life still can't understand. Right. Why? Because you've got to be open through the Holy Ghost to, to know. Because a lot of us have been taught to be arrogant. Mm -hmm. A lot of us have been taught that you're the one and the only one in this, that, the other. Mm -hmm. And it's getting embedded in you and that's all you know. Because you took it off Jesus. Whenever we take it off Christ and put it on us, then we'd have took away the cross. We'd have made the cross of no effect. Can't nobody get saved. That way you see so many people go to church all their life and all of a sudden fall off and leave. And they ain't got no substance. Because why? Because it's about me. And so every time I fall, I just go back and forth. Every time I fall, that old man rock, I just keep moving up. It'd be like that movie when the, uh, the uh, water ball when Henry Winkle was the coach and they got in trouble. He started walking and won't leave the team. Why? Because he was going on flesh. But see, when you're standing on Christ, you're going to stand. Because guess what? It ain't about me no more. It's about Jesus. Amen. Guess what? We already victorious through what he did up on the cross. Amen. Amen? Amen? This is why Paul had to tell them, you got to be in this form. You need to be lowly. You need to be meek. Why? We got the mind of Christ. Why? For the fathers of the gospel. Why? That Christ be preached. Christ crucified be preached. This is the foundation of the believer. This is the foundation of the believer to stand in the midst of turmoil. He said, even in a crook world, that you can stand because you're standing in Christ. The peace that you get comes from God. How can I get it? Just trust it. We as the body of believers have to stand on the word of God and just trust what he says and believe and trust his word. And not only that, take that same walk that Jesus took to be humble, be lowly, be meek, be forgiven, be loving, not arrogant, not prideful, not saying you better than anybody else. Because we're not. 
this is a word for us today to be strengthened as believers trusting in Christ, Christ alone. Trusting in the finished work of the cross. Trusting in him that he's able to give us everything we need through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. This is the walk of the believer. This is the walk of the believer and this is a constant walk. Amen? This is, it, this is the same message preached over and 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 over. Why? Because the enemy is always going to be trying to see who he can devour. He's always going to be going as a wrong line, seeing who he can devour because he want to take your mind off of Jesus. Take your mind off the finished work of the cross. Anything that I can get you to believe anything other than Christ has washed away your sins. He died for your sins. He will bear for you. He was crucified for our sins. He's taken away all your sins. He was buried. And guess what? On the third day, he arose from the dead. And guess what? He didn't die for you because you deserved it. He died for you because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth upon him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Would that be one today that haven't trusted Christ as Savior today? Would that be one today that they come before the cross of Christ as a sinner and come right now and accept Christ right now? He will gladly receive you right now. And he's promised in the word that he give us everlasting life. And he promised too that guess what? It's by grace. It's by grace. It's not a barrier to how good you be and how good you are because you can't be good. It's in what he did. It's all in what Jesus did upon the cross. So if anybody right here think they're too good or think you done, done real good, is why you got salvation and now it's time to repent and turn from yourself and turn to the cross. Yeah. Now it's time to repent right now and turn to the cross. It's by grace that we say through faith, not of works, that any man should boast. So there be one today. There be one today. Because there is a reality. There is a hell and there is a heaven. And we will, as an unbeliever, as a place for the unbeliever, and as a place for the believer. And those who would accept Christ by faith, heaven is our home. Those unbelievers, the Bible says right after John 3, 16, those who have not believed are already condemned. Already condemned. That's, that's why it's so important to get the gospel message out. Because they haven't believed and they haven't heard it. Bible said they, the unbelievers can deal. So we have opportunity right now that a soul be saved today through the gospel. For God requires perfection. And as nobody walking this earth that is perfect. The Bible said that all have sinned and fallen short of his glory. But he gave his gift, which is grace, that when he gave his son Jesus Christ, he gave him that. You can come and accept him as your Savior. Trust that all your sins have been washed away through what he did upon Calvary. Amen. And he'll give you life and give it to you everlasting. That's the gospel. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ that take away the sins of the whole world. God did it because he loved us. And he gave it some. And if you believe upon him, you can be saved right now today. And if there be anyone here today that's needing prayer, we'll pray just as soon as we're through with.